Wow, this is fun. <laughs> I'm having fun now. <laughs> this is my favorite thing to do, my favorite social thing to do, that is. I'll talk about this area of spiritual uh, ideas called sacred geometry. I'm an artist. Uh, I've always been an artist from the time I was a, a baby. I, I've always known. I guess that's kind of the only really unusual thing about me. I really knew exactly what I wanted to do from the time I was little. That's kind of unusual. And I've been uh, off and on that path over the years, and uh, I keep getting directed back to it. And I mean, even when I was a baby, I, I saw it as a spiritual idea. I saw it as a spiritual goal to make art as an assignment. Like, uh, my artistic abilities was a, re a gift, really, to be used for spiritual purpose. And I felt that from a very early age. And that's primarily what I do. And I've been led to the ideas of mandala and, and sacred geometry and... I'm pretty hermetic, I'm pretty, uh, pretty much a recluse, uh, I spend lots of time by myself, but it's been such a healing process, my experience with mandala making and sacred geometry has been, been so healing that I started to perceive that, uh, wow, everybody needs to know this. And so I was called uh, like a shaman in a way to try to express what I've, I've come to know to as many people as I possibly can. That's my primary goal for the, for the rest of my life is to... I feel a little bit like um, Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> you know, except I'm, I guess I'm Charlie Geometry Seed. Or <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm out there, you know, looking for some place to plant, plant these seeds. And that's one of the major things I want to try to get across is that this thing called sacred geometry has this huge appeal to both what you could call left brain and right brain simultaneously, which is a very rare thing. And so on the one hand, it appeals to the scientific uh, sequential time-space kind of mind, the mind that thinks about logic and numbers and mathematics and that, those kinds of things, and it satisfies totally and then at the same time, it, sacred geometry, the ideas of sacred geometry, the realities of sacred geometry appeal to our, our heart mind, our knowing, the knowing in us, the, our intuitive sensibility, simultaneously. So I, I believe that if we could be introduced to these ideas, that we would see the world entirely differently. And and when I first got involved with sacred geometry, it was so mystical, so powerful, 
and I was so excited about it that I tried to tell all my friends about it. And, you know, I'm stumbling around trying to find words that, for something that there aren't any words to. And I would say, but, but, but Sam, you got to, this is, it's, you know, and I would start to talk about it and their eyes would just glaze over in about five seconds as soon as I started talking about it. And I said, oh my God, this is not easy to do. This is really, really hard. Well, I've been practicing <laughs> for a long time. And I think that I, I have the words, I believe. And that's what I pray for. I pray for that Spirit will allow me to find the words and to find the passion and to find the, the, the truth in a way that will touch every single person that comes to this workshop this afternoon, somehow. I don't know how, but that is my goal and that is my intent to touch everyone and to plant some kind of seed that will significantly affect the quality of your experience here in, in this time space opera that we're in the middle of. So when we, one of the things we're going to do this afternoon when we get going into this workshop, I've got this book which is all loaded with cool stuff. I made this so that you can disassemble this and you can scan it and you can put it in your computer, you can duplicate it. That's the idea. Yeah, and there's lots of templates in here. Now you can make your own mandalas and I want you and encourage you to play with these forms in here. All right? So even if you'd come and you just get the book and you stand up and you walk out, you'll be ahead. <laughs> but if you stay, <laughs> oh yeah, you'll get a lot more. So I just wanted to say one more thing and I'm going to let, go, I'll let you go. And it, I was struck when this candle uh, was lit because the whole essence of sacred geometry is based on single-pointedness, oneness, uh, at one -ment, atonement, uh, unity idea undivided single-pointedness and um, when Joanne said uh, this this light this which represents Christ consciousness is everywhere yeah that flame and that little dot is a manifestation of single-pointedness and that flame is in all of us the same flame the same single point and that is the whole essence of sacred geometry omnipresent, omnipotent unity and the way it unfolds into duality and the way it returns to unity. This is an ancient, ancient, ancient understanding. I mean, it goes way, way back beyond Hermes Trismegistus. It was there before the flood. And now, and now after thousands of years, at least 5,000 years, the scientists are saying, wow, there's this thing called quantum physics. And it's saying single-pointedness becomes duality, and then it becomes unity, and then it disappears, and then it comes back. Wow, this is a mystery. <laughs> Even science is embracing the incredible mystery of the universe, the magic of it. They're actually dealing with it. Right up against mystery. Science and mystery like this for the first time. I love it. We are really going to have a lot of fun this afternoon and, and we're going to have a lot to, to share with one another. And I really, really appreciate the opportunity and hope to see you all there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Can you feel sacred geometry? Do you feel the natural attraction? Come to our next workshop. You'll love it. I guarantee it. <laughs>